So good evening everyone. Welcome to this channel named Geeks for Geek School. Today we are going to develop uh, again a very beautiful game. The name of this game is Apple Catcher Game where we guys are going to have two different sprites. The first one is going to be a basket sprite and the second one is going to be the sprite of a red apple right so we will what we will do we'll uh, define a code over here on the sublime text platform which will uh, help us in moving that apple from the top of the display window on which the game will appear on which uh, we'll be able to see all the things appearing so we'll be uh, we'll define a code over here uh, which will help us in uh, making the apple move from the top position towards, uh, uh, you know, downwards, fine, da uh, which will help us in making the apple move from the top downwards uh, along the y axis. And with the help of that basket, we will try to catch it. We'll try to catch it in a basket, which we will keep in the bottom. And we'll define a code with the help of which we can make the basket also move along the x axis in the horizontal way. Right, so let's uh, start with the coding part. So the first thing I would like to do is let's use this Ursina engine. Let's import everything from this Ursina engine. So I think this is the code I can use for getting everything imported from this Ursina engine. Now after this we can have uh, this random module also. Right. So I, I would like to import this random function from this random module. So this is a way we can do it. Now uh, let's define the code with the help of which we can get the basic window app.run. So uh, this will create for us a display window on which we will be able to uh, put our game view define our game view let me just run this code and show you what uh, this code is will give us so i'll have to cancel the build i'll have to rebuild it i haven't saved the changes that's the reason i have rebuilt it okay so it uh, uh, this is the display window which this code over here has created for us. Now it's time for us to, uh, you know, create two walls, right, in the opposite side of this window. So what we are going to do, we can use a variable like this, left wall, let's say, and with the help of this entity, entity function, we can create a bar kind of thing. And that bar is going to cover the entire height of the it is going to expand along the uh, height of this uh, uh, you know window so i would like to have a quad model that is quadrilateral and the color of the balls should be green what I am doing here is I am defining the code with the help of which I can get a proper boundary, a green color boundary on my display window. Right, then we can have something for this scale property also. So I would like to scale it uh, uh, by this factor. And then let's define the position for this left wall. So I would like to have minus 7, I would like to have it at this position. Right, now let me just save the changes and run the code once and see whether we'll be able to get the a wall on the left side of the display or not. So yes, we are able to see a beautiful green colored wall on the left side of this display window on the extreme left side. Right, so that is how you can, you know, put a wall over here likewise if you want to see a wall on the right side you can copy this entire code and you can just paste it here and let's replace the name of the variable with something else let's have right wall for the wall on the right side 
now instead of using this code what we can do we can simply duplicate simply create the duplicate of this left wall so i am copying this name and putting it here and if you want to change the position of x because i don't want to see it over this left wall i want to see this wall on the right side of the display window or the extreme right side so in order to move it on the right side i can i need to change the x position and that's the way we can do it let's build it on python and see what is what are we going to get so we are now getting to uh, green walls right and they are opposite to each other now let's close the window and it's time for us to define the code with the help of which we can get the apple's image you know which i have downloaded from the internet and i've saved it with this name apple in this folder in which i have this coding uh, file you know the file in which i have I'm placing, I'm defining all the code, catch.py. So all the files which I will be using for this game are present in this folder named Apple, which is present inside this Python folder in which I have all my Python files installed, or you can say which are, uh, all my Python files are there in this uh, Python 38-32 folder okay let's have this variable apple and again we we'll, we can use this entity function and to this model property we can assign it this value quad and it's time for us to define the texture right because i want to see i want to access this apple uh, image so it is I'll have to pass apple.png, you know, this is the complete name of this image over here as a value to this texture property. So apple.png we can put here simply and then let's define the position. Uh, so, you know, every time I start the game, I want to see the apple at some different location. So randomly you know i want the game to assign a i want the game to assign a random position to this apple and the position should be different every time the user starts the game or every time he uh, you know starts playing the game so how can we do that we can use this rand int function i simply we can put this rand int over here and let's define uh, this value okay so now a random integer somewhere in between these two values will be picked up by the game window and it will be assigned to this position of this apple fine let me run this game and show you the output so i'm building it on python okay i'm able to see this apple here let me run it again and let's see where are we going to get the apple so you know now the position is different earlier it was getting reflected at this position now it has come at this position let me define a value for the z axis also so i am putting 10 over here i think it will uh, give us a more better output yeah so right now we are not able to see the apple why because initially i don't want the user to see the apple once the basket is there once the basket will be here you know after some time when the game and the user will start the game i would like the apple to be visible to the user not at the very same moment when the user uh, will start playing the game fine so let's have another variable with name basket and i'm copying this whole code and i'm putting it here I'm putting it here for this basket named variable what is the name of this image so it's with name basket.png uh, let's come here and replace this one with basket.png fine it's time for us to now define the position for this basket so i would like to define a fixed position a hardcore position 
for this basket that is the reason passing 0 comma minus 4 okay let me run this game and see what's gonna happen whether we'll be able to see the basket or not yes the basket is visible to us right okay it's time for us to define the code with the help of which we can make the apple move along the y-axis you know i want the apple to come from the top and you know it should start moving towards the uh, bottom without any uh, user's intervention so automatically it should start moving in the uh, you know downwards as soon as it appears on the display window that's the variable i will use for making the apple move along the y-axis and I would uh, initialize this variable with this value minus 2. Now let's define that update function. So this is going to update everything whatever we are going to define inside it for every frame. This is going to update every frame with all the information which, are, which we are going to put here inside it. So let's make use of this global variable first global uh, uh, keyword first and make this apple underscore dy globally accessible okay now because we want to see the apple moving automatically downwards so apple dot y that is the attribute we will take into consideration y attribute right and let's put this thing apple dot y and we can have this uh, you know plus here and we can add this time dot dt it's very simple you know earlier also we used the same code in the previous uh, game if you remember apple dot dy so this will help us in making the apple move along the y-axis let me just show you the output so i'm running the game and let's see what is going to happen to the apple so initially we will not be able to see the apple see so after some seconds you the user will be able to see the apple coming downwards from this top part fine now it's time for us to define the code for making for controlling the movement of the basket so we are going to have an extra variable for this the way we define an extra variable for making the apple move from the top towards the bottom in the same way if you want to control the basket's movement we need to define an extra variable here so let's have this variable basket underscore dx and i would like to assign it uh, this value 5 right and then we can come here in this update function let's now because we want to see it moving along the along the x-axis right i don't want the user to uh, move it anywhere on the screen i just want the user I just want to give the user the rights to move the basket along the x-axis in the horizontal way. So what we can do, we can simply use this x attribute and let's, if the user will press the right direction key, I would like to see the, uh, what we call it, basket moving in the right side. So we'll have to check which key the user has pressed. So that's how we can check the right arrow key fine if the right key arrow key will be pressed then what should happen i would like to multiply it with time dot dt then we can multiply it with basket dot uh, basket underscore dx it should be underscore dx let me see if i will uh, if i can get the output or not so if i on pressing the right arrow key let's see what's going to happen to this basket i'm able to move it in the right side okay so the code is working perfectly fine let's use the same code uh, and i'm pasting it here it's time for us to change the code change this line of code so that we can make the basket move in the left side on pressing the left arrow key so that's how we can do it i think yep let's run this game so all this we have already done in the previous lecture 
if you guys remember and if you haven't checked the previous tutorial i would like you guys to please go ahead and check the previous tutorial see i am able to now move this basket fine let me run this game again so we are able to see the apple moving downwards we are able to see the basket also moving in both the directions but the moment you know the apple touches this basket nothing happens i would like to put a check on the collision happening in between apple and this basket so let's do that so for that also i will make use of this update function inside it let's define a variable hit underscore info so i'm using the same concept which i used in the previous game you remember i hope you remember that uh, paddle game paddle and ball game which we developed earlier before this i think yesterday i shooted the second part of that game so i used this osina engine for developing that game and i used the same concepts which i'm using here right for everything whatever you're seeing right now here so for this uh, collision thing also i'm using the same concept so we'll use this intersects named function and it will check whether the apple uh, collided with anything or not so if uh, this if this dot hit if this condition is true then what should happen apple dot x uh, i would like my game to assign it a random position somewhere in between minus 4 to 4 means again it will go on the top and it will uh, start coming down and uh, besides i would like to change the y attribute also to 4 i think this is going to give us a uh, right output let me just save the changes and run this game and see whether i will be able to get the required output or not so if this apple will touch this basket let's see what's going to happen okay nothing happened why have i missed something okay i haven't defined the colliders for uh, you know for these two entity for these two entities i need to define the collider also right so we can define this collider as box similarly we can define the box collider for the basket also right you know the the way a rectangle is used in pi game for checking the collisions in the same way we use colliders here for each of the entities for which we want to check the collision we use this collider as box so now if you will rebuild your game on python so i think this time we'll be able to get the output so the moment the apple will collide with this basket it changed it its position see it changed its position and it again went to the top and started coming towards the bottom so we are getting the required output fine this is working perfectly fine it's time for us to now define the code for the score part how can we keep a check on this score so let's have a, another variable with name score and let me just initialize it with uh, this value zero so it's a counter variable i am using here and let's come up let me make it a uh, globally accessible and let me make this basket underscore dx also globally accessible fine now what we can do we can simply come down over here so if this condition is true then apple will change its position and i would like at the same time this course value also should get incremented by one should be incremented by one and that is the way we can do it besides that i would like to see this course value getting printed on my screen also on the display window so that's the function with the help of which we can do it print on screen and let me just use this f string property and apple apples caught so how many apples are caught now that's what we we'll have to mention here okay and you know we can uh, so number of apples 
cot will come in this score named variable so we can define it here what this will do what this f string will do it will convert the integer value into a string value and it will then reflect that value on the screen let me just show you the output first before proceeding to the next part but before that we need to define some more parameters for this uh, score thing so we need to define the position at which we want to see the score getting reflected i want to see it somewhere on the left top side of the screen so minus 0.8 Fine, then we can have 4.5 instead of 4.5 let's pass 0.45 i think that is more appropriate 0.45 fine then we can have uh, the scale of one right and what is for what duration you would like to see the score on the window i would like to see it for at least two seconds so this is the whole code which uh, with which we can get the required output i think we you all have understood this code. Let me now run this game and show you the output. So I hope we'll be able to see the score part also. Okay, so the apple is coming down. Okay, we are able to see the score over here. That is fine. That is great. It's working perfectly fine now. Okay. Okay, now if I will leave this apple, let's see what's going to happen. So nothing is happening. We'll have to put a check on this thing also. If the if we miss the apple, if the user will miss the apple, then what should happen? Let me define a code for this thing too. So we'll be using this update function only. And here we can simply put a check on this part that if the apple dot y at any point of time it becomes greater than minus four, then what should happen? uh so let me copy this thing and i'm putting it here i would like to see this thing getting reflected on the window right in the center so you lost the game fine and then we can have this thing let's restart Fine, that's what I would like to, I would like the user to see and it should get reflected in the middle of the window. So 0, 0, we can put here and then we can define the origin also. So let's define the origin as 0, 0, fine. Then we can have a scale of 2 for this and for two sec for two seconds at least i would like to see this message getting reflected fine i think uh, we can run the game now and see whether we'll be able to get the required output or not so if i am able to catch the apple let's see what is going to happen so the scores value is incrementing by one every time i'm catching every time i'm Becoming successful in catching the apple, the score is incrementing by one. The moment I will leave it. Okay, so this message has come. You lost the game. Let's restart. Now, what I want is the game should automatically get restarted. So for that, we'll, we can uh, put some code over here. So score, we need to first make the score equal to zero, right? Because now, uh, once this once the game will get restarted, the score should again start incrementing from zero. And then we can change the apple's x position and y position also. So what I am doing for this, I'm copying these two lines of code and I'm putting both of them here. Fine. And instead of putting four here, let's make it 10. I think that is going to be a good idea. Or anything else we are missing. I think we are good to go. Let me just run this game again and see what is going to happen. So the moment uh, the user will leave this apple, right, let's see what's going to happen. So we are able to see this message. Now what? After two seconds, we can, the game will restart automatically and we'll be able to see the apple coming again from the top towards the bottom like this. 
So it is working perfectly fine. It's amazing. Right now it's time for us to make the game more interactive and how to do that we can add some audio file to our game. So I would like to add an audio file first over here at this point when the apple collides with the basket. So with the help of this audio function we can do it very easily. Now I have an audio file here with name third and if you'll see the properties it is a wave file third dot wave. So I can simply add third dot wave here. Fine, let's see whether we'll be able to hear the audio or not. So I'm running this game. So the moment the apple will collide with the basket. Okay, so we were able to hear the sound. We are able to hear the sound and it's the game is now more interactive and it's uh, looking very appealing fine okay let's add the second sound which i have with name lost over here in this folder so it's its complete name is lost dot wave all right so what we can do we can simply come over here and you know the moment this thing happens the player uh, fails to catch the apple at this point i would like this sound, this lost sound to be played. I want my user to hear this lost dot wave sound. Done with saving the changes. Let's now build it on Python. Okay, so the apple is there. We leave the apple. We were able to hear the sound. Okay, so the game restarted and still and it's working perfectly fine. The moment you leave the apple. So that is how you can create an amazing apple catcher game. Let me now check the comment section. If I have anything to answer, would definitely like to answer that query. And thank you very much to all the students who are there with me right now in this lecture. I hope you guys are enjoying this one. In case you have any issues, any queries, feel free to let me know about the same. Please put your queries in the comment box so that I can answer. So I am uh, not able to see any queries right now in the comment section. I hope everything is clear to all of you. So this is it from my side in this lecture. Thank you very much for being there with me in this tutorial. Have a great day ahead. God bless.